Good day and welcome to our short demonstration and explanation of this error message. Remote server return 555.7.520 access denied. Your organization does not allow external forwarding. Please contact your administrator for further assistance AS7555. Now that's what an admin will notice. What a user will notice is your message wasn't delivered because the recipient's email provider rejected it. Fortunately, this is a very simple fix. But it's a choice as to whether you want to fix it. So let's explain firstly how it came about, and then we'll explain how to correct it. So the first thing you want to do is bring up a browser and surf to portal.office.com. We'll show you what your user probably did. So you get into your portal and go to your mail, Yes, by the way, you could just go to outlook.office.com. I use portal.office.com for everything because that's where everything is. It's where all of the URLs are. It's just so much easier than trying to remember security.microsoft.com and exchange and so on and so forth. Okay, enough said. Okay, so now let's go over to the cog, top right hand corner, and search for forwarding. This is what your user most likely did. They probably went in here and they said, yeah, I'm going to send my mail out to my Gmail account. So I'm gonna send my mail to, you know, Nick whatever at gmail.com or Yahoo, whatever it is, right? And uh, then they click save and now their mail is blowing up and they don't know why. So I'm gonna discard that because I don't wanna do that. That's most likely what happened. Now, from an admin's perspective, let's go back to portal.office.com and go to the admin center. And I'll show you how to verify this as an admin that that's what they did. Expand your users and go find the individual user in question. In my case, it's this one. Then click on mail. And in mail, take a look if to see if mail email forwarding is turned on. If it is, well, that's what your user did. They went into their OA, the Outlook web app, and turned forwarding on. But you probably have a policy that kills that. So let's just show you where that policy is, how to change it, and why it's there. Okay, so what you do is go back to your portal at office.com, click on admin, expand, and drill into security. Now this is just gonna take you to security.microsoft.com, so yes, you could go straight there, it's just fine. And what you wanna do is click on policies and rules, on the left side, and you wanna to go to threat policies, and go to anti-spam policies and you'll notice there's an outbound policy which is a policy that confuses new admins or people that aren't uh, security people uh, we do a lot of security things here at uh, urtech.ca so we deal with this quite a lot anyway let's explain it so uh, click edit protection settings and in your case you will have either automatic system control or you'll have off forwarding is disabled those are the two options that'll cause you this error, the 555.7.520 access denied. Your org does not allow external forwarding. So what you want to do, if you just want to get around it, is turn it on. Now you may ask, why would you ever block people from forwarding? And more broadly, why would you have an outbound anti-spam policy? Shouldn't your users be able to send anything to anyone, anytime, anywhere? Well, the answer to that is no, If certainly if you're in security, and after you listen to what I have to say, hopefully you agree that it's a bad idea. I'd like to interject for just 10 seconds and ask you to click like if you found this video useful. Our site is dedicated to explaining technology in simple ways and providing cookbook answers for technical problems. We spend a lot of time on Windows 10 and Windows Server. We spend a lot of time on Azure, Office 365, but mostly our products are about how-tos. Lots and lots of cookbooks like how to uninstall something when it's stuck. If you would click subscribe, we would greatly appreciate it. It really helps us with the Google algorithm. Thanks for your help and back to the show. There are two big reasons why you'd want to at least consider outbound mail for anti-spam. Number one, you have a rogue user, somebody that's quitting, somebody that's angry, some whatever, and they are sending out some nasty stuff to your clients. You wanna make sure that that stuff is at least considered before it goes out by the anti-spam rules. The second reason, which is specific to forwarding, is what if your user gets hacked? Because take a look at this. Go into the user's mail, and we'll go off to forwarding again. 
And you'll notice there's the enable forwarding. Forward my mail to, and you could put in, let's turn that on. Let's put in something that you would like, like hacker at darksite.com, whatever, right? But also put in that keep a copy of forwarded messages. Well, that means your mail is being copied out to this other guy, a hacker, for instance. And because they've got the checkbox saying keep a copy forwarded, your user may not even know about it. So this could go on for a while. It's basically just creating a clone of the email. And think about what information your CEO has in his email, or her email for that matter. So it's pretty dangerous to allow forwarding to external uh, accounts. So as a result, Microsoft has put this policy in place and by default set it to, no, you don't forward mail, but you can easily turn it on, right? I have, I had, I had no choice. I had to enable it, uh, but I will turn it off as soon as this person is gone because this is generally a very bad idea. Hey, if you found this video useful, please click like. Subscribe's also appreciated. Look, they both really help with the Google algorithms and that's how we pay for things these days. If you have a question or comment, put it in the comment section below. We'll get back to you or somebody else will. And you can always get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.